All right, let's do it. So um, this one I'm recording live also inside Discord for anyone that wants to drop in. Uh, I know with the time zone differences and stuff, it's more likely you'll you'll pick this one up later. But it's been a while since we looked over the major charts. Uh, so we've been waiting for a lot of this choppy range play to come to an end. And, <clears throat> uh, you know, the question is, are we there yet? So we've had the CPI and Fed notes uh, yesterday. That's what I was waiting for. And we did get a, a kind of decent move here coming off of the fair value gap that Daryl, legendary Daryl, had mentioned in his previous update. That's the move down that we had been waiting for, um, which basically swept this wick here, as you can see, and just punctured into this box. Um, the question is, is that enough? And the answer is, it could be, but it might not be. And personally, when I look at the total and others charts, they still... The door is wide open for another leg down. And I think with BTC, the, the shape of this um, also suggestive of the, at least the potential for another good dig down into some of these areas here, possibly just here. But the shape of this is beginning to look quite a lot like a large corrective flat structure. So let's get straight into that. All right. So from a if we zoom all the way out, just as a reminder, I'm going to just remove some of the bottom stuff for now. This move all the way up from an Elliott wave perspective looks an awful lot like a one, two, uh, three. And quite likely, in fact, this is a one, two, and then a one, two, three, four, five to give us the top of a three, come down again, and then probably another high again after that. So in simple, very simple terms, this, this structure looks incomplete uh, in multiple wave degrees, all right? And we're in the territories where we should be creating a bunch of wave fours and then in like wave four impulse, wave four impulse. And that's kind of what we're getting here, these very flat looking structures with the occasional dig into liquidity. So no no major changes on the macro we're still looking for bitcoin to blast off um most likely over the six digits um 100k plus we're just going through that phase where everyone's trying to be shaken out of the market and the market makers are doing their best to create these patterns which basically create sellers for them so remember when we're going sideways lots of people are building up positions and in a bullish market, the manipulation will be to the downside to hit those stop losses. And that makes all of these people who were going long, that turns them into a seller. And the market makers and the whales can then buy up all of these guys' coins, having converted them into a seller. And then price kind of starts going the other way. So that's pretty much all we're really looking for here. We're looking for a signal to say that the market makers have done um, accumulating from everyone that's been a bit too impatient or hasn't waited for the liquidity hunt, all the normal things. And when we look at this pattern, there is it is completely fair enough to say that this is an ABC of some sorts. It is, you know, it's very choppy, so hard to decide exactly what this count is. Um, but what we can't rule out is there's no reason as i've said in previous videos that this kind of a thing can't happen where we kind of just build out even more of this picture so at the moment um the way i look at it though there is a there is an argument here that this is a five wave move and the fifth wave here has just made a a, a double top and that's just waiting to be kind of taken out and blasted through but B waves and X waves are quite mysterious and the market makers definitely have a habit of painting them in a way where they often end up looking like they could be five wave patterns because of course so much of the training material that's out there is designed to trip us up and the most stand basic smart money concepts SMC will make you lose mo a lot of the time basic Elliott wave will make you lose a lot of the time um, I don't think there's a panacea there's, you, you have to kind of be able to read the charts in a way where you're always open-minded to whether it could be a trap. Is it too good to be true? And I think at the moment in this area, I wouldn't want to YOLO this as a five-wave move. That's all I'm saying. 
Um, however, having said that, you know, where, where is the liquidity now in this area? Well, the only real liquidity, given that this move has already taken everyone out, is either further down, which is spooky, which brings us back to very pre old charts I shared saying that maybe there would be one more flush all the way down to 52K. Um, still can't 100% rule that out, but more likely still is that it's just this this range here that kind of got taken here. Potentially, um, we need a follow-up move just to come down into this area and we'll see whether we can hold this overall range and start considering this as that, that first wave impulse to take us out of this zone, okay? So that's really what I'm looking for. To, to, to go on to any leveraged longs, I want some more carnage. I don't mind taking a shot in this area, but it looks like we're starting to see um, price closing and trading back up after and leaving a nice wick. But if we're stuck in this area down here for too long, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to sit on my hands and see whether actually we end up rolling all the way back to 52, flushing this entire range, getting everyone extremely bearish, and then off we go. So I'm a very big buyer down at in this area 52 i'm also happy to take a shot at things in this area if we get the right right price action so that's pretty much it for for btc i don't think um, we need to overcomplicate this any further all right looking at the weekly chart it's the same kind of situation really um don't want to be closing down underneath in this area otherwise it it looks very sketchy and probably going to be testing some of these lower weekly areas and from an Elliott wave perspective there isn't really an issue for us um, with price coming all the way down to 50k you could even argue using candle bodies um, 46k so even if price comes down here it hasn't actually invalidated our wave count that we are continuing up so Elliott wave says be be open-minded to um, larger dips than the market would be expecting right now. And just keep in mind that everybody's going to be mad bullish. The news is very bullish with the CPI numbers and uh, the expectation of more rate cuts and all of that. So the unexpected move right now is to the downside. It's just that this price action here, as I've just described, it has to come quite a lot lower to really create or generate a lot more sellers this this move here has already done a fairly good job and doing some kind of internal liquidity hunt in this area would to me look like it would be again good enough to just get get some more people shaken out um and move on but we're gonna have to wait and see that's personally for me i'm waiting and seeing with spot it's a different story let me move to eth so with eth we had we have a slightly different structure going on than BTC, right? Um, and the the top area here has also been quite different. So we we basically, from what I could tell, had a five wave move in this area, which left the door open to a uh, kind of more instant continuation pattern. However, in the end, again, in the previous video, I've mentioned that in this area, couldn't really rule out. There isn't a reason or a rule about time to say that we couldn't come and take out this wick. And that's what we, we ended up doing um, in the end. So personally, I added a little bit of spot here at 34, uh, 3450. And I've, I've got some more buys as if price wants to sort of come down into these areas. Just the question of now, is is that what it's going to do? Um, ETH, ETH is definitely a slightly interesting chart. Um, it, again, zoomed out, we have the same thing here where it seems quite likely that this is some kind of a one, two, three. Um, this looks like a wave four. Uh, you know, we should be building a wave five here. Um, it's just a question of like, what, what on earth has happened here? So, you know, the, the bearish case, which I'll describe quickly on Ethereum, similar for BTC, is that this move down here is actually some kind of a five wave diagonal, uh, like one, two, three, four, five. And, you know, the third is getting shorter than the first. The fifth is really short compared to three and one. So it's kind of condensed into this area. And you could then argue this is an A, some kind of a B wave. And then this is a five wave pattern with an ending fifth here. 
So you could try and argue this as an ABC with that being a one down or an A and then an X, or sorry, a W and an X. So what I'm trying to say is you could argue this, right? Which again, no one's going to want to see, no one's going to be expecting. That's the bearish case. And I think that becomes valid if we start really trading underneath um, this level here, maybe this level here, this kind of an area we don't really want to see Ethereum going under here. Otherwise, a bit like with BTC, we're kind of having to say, well, hmm, what's up with that? Where is the liquidity if we're if we're coming down here and suddenly below these kind of levels, the liquidity is actually a break of all of this and some crazy raid into all of these areas. And at that point, um, it is from an Elliott Wave perspective, again, purely this market structure looks extremely bearish if we're if we're sort of coming back and trading under this wick and under this this high here. So don't want to see that. So coming back to ETH, the bull case is something like uh, the same as BTC that this is just some kind of an uh, an ABC, some kind of a flat structure. Uh, we have the ETH BTC shit chart that I won't bother showing, but you know we had a big spike on ETH versus BTC, which is which is what gives us the indication that ETH has a good chance now of outperforming Bitcoin on the next leg up. And if it's going to do that, it it's, it needs to break out somewhere, right? There needs to be a market breakout and. The ETH BTC chart is, is essentially looks a lot like the USDT chart right now. It looks like a huge pump and now a big kind of um, drooping sell off. But there's nothing wrong with that because on the ETH BTC chart, we're looking at um, what looks like just a, a nice impulse structure. So this part coming off on the side is a, just a very normal looking retracement at this stage. It just looks like a five up and then ABC. I see someone just dropped into Discord. Let me turn on um, one of my screens. Hang on. Uh, you're in the uh, guy just joined the audience, right? Let me know if you can uh, see the screen. I was, I've just been recording this on Loom anyway. Um, hopefully you can hear me and see. But anyway, I'll just carry on now. So we're up to ETH and effectively summarize here is that, yeah, we don't want to see price action coming below here. Otherwise, market structure looks pretty bizarre and we've got to be open minded to some ridiculous flush going on. And possibly, possibly on the all the way zoomed out that this is actually just an A, B, and then we're going down really hard and actually there's no bull run. But that's extremely unlikely. It still feels like at this stage. So for now, um, with ETH, as I said, I bought some spot in this area, happy to buy some more spot down here, but probably going to be concerned if we're closing daily candles below this area. So on the bull, the bullish side, very similar to Bitcoin, this this section uh, looks quite a lot at the moment like an ABC. This could be an impulse starting to take us out of this range, but with Total and others, which I'm about to come on to, it still looks to me like um, we really you can't YOLO this area at all. So I think at the moment, BTC is the easier chart to read. ETH. ETH looks really, um, this huge gap just makes it very difficult to decide what's going to happen. Um, so for now, I'm going to move on from ETH. I still think the upper targets are the same, 4,000, 4,400, and then probably some uh, one more breakout, some chop, and then another fifth wave bringing us up to this six, seven, eight thousand area. But for all we know, it could extend a lot and just keep continuing because we don't know how long this bull market is going to last. They're typically one or two years and we're not, you know, ETH hasn't even yet touched an all time high and Bitcoin hasn't really done any of the moves we, we would be expecting it to either. So there's a lot of time still to go in this move. I'm just going to move to uh, total. All right, 
right. So with total, this pretty much mirrors the Bitcoin chart. So again, zooming all the way out, just go to the daily. The same kind of situation um, looks like a one, two, one, two, three. This is some kind of a fourth wave. So in theory, from an Elliott wave perspective, we're not even done with wave three and we should be looking for something like this to occur with this leg being completely bananas and possibly going into trillions and trillions and trillions if the money printers get turned on and uh, everyone goes mad for crypto again. So total, no real changes. The, the bear case, similar to Bitcoin, is that if we start closing too many high time frame candles on, under these kind of key levels here in this trend area, then it, it really puts the overall market structure in danger. And I think we have to exit the market and just see what happens. That's all I can really say is just the case of have a trigger for getting out in case the market is trying to fool absolutely everybody in the world. And there is only a bear market coming for some for some reason, just in case. So for me, that's this level here around 2.2 trillion. Um, again, I don't care about some wicks and some hourly candles and whatever. It's more like if we're closing daily and weekly down here, there's a problem. So very similar to Bitcoin. Uh, this is could easily be our fourth wave of the structure that's building to this area. But you again, there's no rule with time to say that we can't be doing something like this or to hear um, retracement patterns basically do whatever they want. And you can only really look for something to give you a clue that it's ended. And again, exactly the same as BTC. There is an argument here for a five wave pattern off the back of what looks like our retracement. So there isn't a problem with, again, any trading coming into this area, as long as it doesn't start coming under this zone. Any break above this level quite likely means that we're, we're doing this and we're just on to that next stage of the, of the breakout. So for now, with, with total at least, very much the same as Bitcoin, we're just kind of waiting uh, to see which way the wind blows. I think there is a buying opportunity, as I've said in the other channels, that if we do get one more sweep into these areas, but it, le it starts leaving wicks and we're closing then, say, four hour candles back kind of above this midpoint, at some point, I think you could pull a trigger and just say, do you know what, I'll put my stop loss under this wick and assume that was the end of our retracement. And you could lose a trade as usual, but there, there would be enough in this area at that point to make it a reasonable um, speculation, uh, basically to get into a long. But right now, I think I don't personally want to leverage anything because I don't know what kind of wicks are going to appear and we can't rule out the idea that actually we come all the way down and snap this low. And <clears throat> conversely, if we don't make any more action down here and break this high and start closing some four hour candles above here, as I said, it's pretty likely that this is a one, some kind of two and continue. I don't think the retracement pattern here would make sense to kind of go here and then come back in again. It would, it's always possible, but it just starts to look way too big and things taking way too much time. So that's total for now. Again, the trend is still intact going up and there's no reason to panic about this market until we're really breaking under these zones, which we're, we're not at all so far. Let's go to others because others is our altcoin index, right? Um, so starting with the daily, this this chart is quite special in a way. Um, we had a huge, obviously the huge run up in 2021. And this sell off uh, was obviously the usual spectacular sell off to go along with it. This run up, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same count as the rest of the market. Um, let me draw that up and explain. So here it seems to be, looks like our first impulse. That That's probably no one would argue with that. And it looks quite clear that we have this three wave move coming down. So that's quite likely some kind of a one, two. 
this this move here does not break that high so it has to be a sub wave of a larger degree move so we're looking at something like one two three four five so possibly this is actually what's going on with altcoins and we already have our first wave in of a potentially absolutely enormous bull market one two boom 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 right that looks absolutely freaking insane but that's what crypto does right when you have a market that is tiny like the crypto market um of say two whatever we said we were just looking at a couple two or three trillion at best well what happens if the boomers who hold 40 trillion worth of monies are genuinely convinced by the mass media to throw all their cash into crypto for some weird reason you could you could easily 10x this entire crypto market. And if you're talking about shit coins starting to get um, ETFs launched with S SOL ETF, XRP ETF, all of this kind of a thing, I think you're going to see some absolutely bananas price action at some point in the coming year or two. So again, coming back to this as just an Elliott wave um, count, do we have a full five wave move? And then we can see here a one, two, three. And you know, if you followed in the channel over the last few weeks, I kind of gave a warning that here looks to me like a pretty clean ABC. And with no breakout above that weight, that number five, when it could have done, we've ended up getting a big sell off. And that sell off um, to me looks like, you know, it, it can continue to give us a much larger ABC pullback big big flush and then hammer it again so for alts i'm slightly cautious i think the the game right now is back to btc and eth has that the eth versus btc play where maybe eth will outperform but i think the money is all with the majors right now i don't think i think meme coins had a pretty fun run and floki uh, pepe some of these coins took out their highs but to me that is a signal again that maybe lots of altcoins now have done their, their first big run for this season and they need to finish now a pullback and maybe meme coins were the final guys to go. There are still a lot of charts that I don't think have even run like the metaverse charts, sand and mana, um, some of those guys. So as usual, I think we're going to see some different action with alts, but looking at this chart right here, again, with our possible third wave, putting it here, it's hit almost the 2.618 extension, which is absolutely fine, more than fine for, you know, picking out where a third wave could end. You'd usually look for 1.618 in a clean impulse to get 2.618 and then find that wave five hit the 4.618. To me, this this says that this could be a just clean five waves in. So what does that mean for us? It means that we want to find an area logically for a pullback on this alt market before starting to consider some YOLO positions and leveraging up on some some uh, interesting some interesting coins that kind of match up with our overall others chart. So let's just do the obvious because we don't need to overcomplicate it. If I think this is my first A B C down W, and let's say this is my B or my X, whatever. We're looking for an extension to come down. And as I said in the channel in the last week, that's usually 0.618 or one to one. Could be 1.618, but let's just assume one to one. That hits our golden pocket. This is just a very obvious area to effectively just do this. Set an alarm and see what happens. Our discount zone, if we want to look at this from a kind of smart money perspective, is the below the 0.5. So again, what do we want to do? We want to set an alarm here, which happens to be our 0.618 extension and our, our discount zone beginning. So this is another area where alts could find a reversal right here. Um, I'm going to just turn on uh, an indicator that I got rid of. So this is our volume profile. So we can see if any of our, if the volume is going to line up with anything that we've got here and bottom line is not really, we're kind of inside this volume area here, uh, but breaking under it and see the price action. 
is around here right now. So just going back to this, we're, you can see that we're kind of just about to fall under the main volume profile and that's you know where this drop will kick in and major volume is all the way down here. So remember that the market happily flushes 80% after each bull run. So just because this is our discount zone beginning and just because this is a golden pocket, it doesn't mean that just as I've drawn with this arrow, it doesn't mean we won't end up all the way back down here touching this volume node. So again, why not? Little alert here. Little note to sells. 80% flush. Volume node. So if we go to sleep on alts for a little while, let's just say, and um, these alarms start getting hit, we can come back to this chart and we'll remember, I'll remember what these are anyway, but this one I might forget. Okay, so here we go, 80% flush in volume node. So from a time perspective, as you know, we're looking for at least one third of time to pass to say the retracement pattern is complete. That's this kind of purple box here, which means that we're not interested in buying alts based on this particular trade plan we're talking about now until the end of July. So basically from August onwards, uh, we're looking for the market to go absolutely apeshit and that would line up with the Fed potentially making their first rate cut in September. And maybe the market is going to front run that. So we all get excited in August, right? I'm you know, just putting out some logical concepts there that we can build on as the months roll by and see if that all makes sense. Maybe the Fed will cut rates even sooner than that because they're constantly lying in the news, just trying to um, trip people up. So either way, uh, we, we've got some reasons basically here on this chart to tell us that let's just ignore altcoins unless this market completely changes and this chart blasts off and uh, breaks this breaks this bearish concept, then we might as well just say, okay, market's likely to go down and we should only be interested in longing Bitcoin and ETH at this moment. And as I said, even with Bitcoin and ETH, um, hmm, kind of dubious, we're in that area where there could be a big flush because no, no one's going to be looking for it right now. Just as with this kind of a move, I don't think anyone's really expecting alts to flush this hard. Um, but hey, Let's see. Let's see who's right in the end. So that's it. That's the rundown of BTC, ETH, Total and others. It's been quite a long session. I'll throw this out on YouTube. So anyone mad enough that wants to watch it can do. Um, my friend in the audience, I don't know if you're listening, watching. If you've got any questions, just type them in the chat now. And um, I'll hang around for a moment just in case uh, you, you guys are there. Let me know. I'm going to guess no questions. So I'm going to end the loom. Um, yeah, I'll end it there and get this one out onto YouTube's. All right.